Hey. No, I like it. It uh, offers promise, hopefulness. Yeah. Or it could turn. That's the other thing is it starts, hey, I got it. my test results. It could be that. But <laughs> Hey, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> that's always a chance with me, right? Uh, uh, chance. You haven't got me yet. That's right. Uh, so, you know, I like to have something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, me too. <laughs> it's episode <laughs> 75. Wow. The golden episode? The golden episode. Yes. this You're going to love this one, everyone. Especially that one guy who keeps saying weirdly passive aggressive stuff about me. <laughs> Still on the case? Yeah, I love this guy though. I'm glad he's listening. And it's funny. They, uh, well, first of all, I should say of Alex and Jim, analyze Billy Joel lyrics. <laughs> yes. Get the right podcast. Yeah. Don't watch 75 episodes of the wrong thing. That's right. In one of the recent comments, Somebody said something like, on this show, I'm really learning a lot about narcissism. And I thought, why is this guy taking a shot at me? Or you, I, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's about me. And then uh, I, and I look at the episode and it's the we're talking about the song Laura. Oh yeah. I'm like, oh no, he was just commenting on the episode. <laughs> what what are the chances? And he also said, I also had diff had difficulty with my mother, and he shared a personal comment. And I'm like, no, he was just commenting, which means I am a narcissist because I thought it was about me. <laughs> wow, you zinged yourself. I did. Dude was just making a very nice... It's So our show's weird. This is a weird thing about our show, and it's probably true about a lot of podcasts and uh, YouTube shows. I'll get comments on stuff, but it'll be about like episode 22. Oh, yeah. And I don't know what that episode was right away. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it was just a random sentence. Yeah. So literally, I thought this guy was taking a shot at me. And no, you shared a lot of personal stuff in that episode because that's the song was about. The song's about his mother. Yeah. And and not to tell tell tales out of school, but you have a mom. I have a mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's. I'm going to circle back. She's a narcissist. Yeah, so, I think we all learned a lot. Yeah, and uh, but because it was so long, you know, like what the hell is this guy yelling? Oh, okay. No, <laughs> no he's making a nice comment. The cross reference your own show. Yeah. Figure out Maybe nobody's ever been insulting me. Maybe every single time, like the one guy was like, I don't know why this guy accused me of being a big shot. I'm like. <laughs> so last week you went golfing. That's true. Next week, I'm going out of town. Where are you going? Guess where I'm going. I, 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 you're not Berry Farm. No. But it's near nearer than I am currently to Knott's Berry Farm. Okay. I, I, to, uh, the last remaining Sambo's restaurant. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Let uh, me say that where I'm going is pertinent to this show. Oh. Wow. Are you are you going to Los Angelinos? I am to do <laughs> what? To record a hit album? To watch Billy Joel and oh, Stevie God. Nicks in concert. Right. I forgot they were doing that swing together. That's awesome. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's a <great laughs> weird show. Huh? That's, it's, it feels like a weird combo, but great. It does and it doesn't. Because, well, yes, in the sense of like, what the hell do they have in common? Well... A uh, series of bad relationships. Sure. Uh, both great songwriters. They're both from the 70s. They're both from the 70s. I feel like he would have made fun of her a lot in high school. And it would have been because he had a crush on her. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ultimately, yes. But she wouldn't know that. And she yep. got really sad. <laughs> yep. 
um yeah i'm really pumped it's uh we've talked about this before about the weirdness of how young people will show up at a Bill, billy joel concert and oh yeah very old people this is why so i'm going to tell you how this happened i was uh having lunch and a friend of mine we're not crazy we're not like great friends but we've met and there she's a nice girl and we talk sometimes her name is sierra and uh, we are friends because we have mutual friends. And she's chatting about some concert she went to. Like, she went to see the Lumineers. Oh, sure. And then she said, my next concert, I'm going to see Billy Joel. I'm so excited. And she was, couldn't stop talking about how excited she was to go to L.A. to see Billy Joel. How old do you think she is? I cannot imagine. 19. 20. 19? 19. Wow. And she's excited to go see Billy Joel. That's How fun. nice is that, right? You know, it seems so crazy when the young people like Billy Joel or whatever. And then you think about your own life growing up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I liked Elvis. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Not because, you know, he didn't play my town when I was growing up or anything. But of course, it's pre-existing. It's what I'm learning. I learned a TV term today. Um because I was asking about the potential writer's strike and whether or not the studios would be bothered by that. And uh, Shoemaker, our boss, said, uh, it doesn't bother them because they got library. And I said, what are you talking about? And he's like, oh, you know, like The Office and stuff like that. It's got, they got old episodes of old shows and it's referred to as library. Oh. So, that's pretty cool. That is cool. Every young generation gets hooked on some percentage of library. Like there are a lot of fucking high school kids now who are finding the office and think it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Jenna Fisher in an interview was talking about how she was in an airport and some young kid said, hey, do you know that you look like an older Pam? <laughs> Ow. And, uh they're right. She does look like a some a little older fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, you can't be mad, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the, your friend is hooked on the Billy Joel Library. Yeah, and she and so I went to Denny's with my wife because we we're very sophisticated. <laughs> and uh, I what did I get? I got uh, I got the salmon there, which I think is a little risky, but it was fine. It was perfectly good. Right. And uh, we were talking and I was telling her this story about how this girl at work gets to go see Billy Joel. And I couldn't go. I couldn't buy tickets for reasons at the time because there were some financial issues in our house, but that have been subsequently been resolved. Oh, very good. And my wife is chatting and with me and was like, yeah, it's, yeah I have I go, I'm going to L.A. anyway because it's my friend's birthday. And I was talking and she's like, oh, yeah, those tickets. And that's like, ah, too bad you couldn't go. And my wife is fiddling around on her phone while we're chatting. And uh, as she's talking, she goes, oh, I guess you do have tickets. And she bought me tickets with her money. So oh, nice. She's a good girl. Yeah. <laughs> good job. And she bought an extra ticket for a buddy of mine who I'm going to see, who always buys, he has bought tickets for me to go to a lot of shows just because he doesn't go by himself and we're good friends. And I meant to pay him back and I haven't paid him back for much. And then I was like, well, if the, I could get him these Billy Joel tickets. And then that's, and that just doesn't mean that we're even, it just means that I'm showing, I, I appreciate his kindness. Yeah. So and then uh, Mary Jo gets you out of the house. Yeah, which is win, win, win. Mostly a win for her. Absolutely. <laughs> All the wins. Where is he playing? He is playing in El Segundo. And he is playing at these. Well, let me look at my tickets. I bet you will uh, get to hear Los Angelinos, if I had to guess. Oh, and I wouldn't mind that at all. I, it's at SoFi Stadium. Okay, yeah, yeah. Billy Joel and Steve, my God, this is even looking at them. I'm like, yeah, I have these tickets. <laughs> Great. Yeah, it was so nice of my wife. She's a good girl. She, you're, a right? good, uh, you're a good gift getter. Yeah. Yeah. Receptionist? That's not the word. <laughs> Receiver. Receiver. Oh, yeah. 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 She is a she's a good and kind. 
fine receptionist, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm excited about you got anything cool coming up? No. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah, I got a birthday coming up. When? How cool that is, but it's coming. Next Wednesday. Oh, son of a gun. I will be I will be in LA. Call me. <laughs> I'll call you. I believe I have your number. I, I have no sh I'm not certain I have your number because I've had your number a very long time in my phone. We only communicate by Zoom notifications. Yeah, and there's half a chance that the number I have is an old number, but I don't know. Half a chance. Well, we should we should do a live on air test. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. Get your phone nearby. Yeah, make sure it's on. Okay. Let's see. Oh, mom texted. Hold on, why did it do that? Let's try. Uh, her stomach hurts. And what? my stomach has COVID again. <laughs> oh boy. I gotta stop reading my texts. Do, do, do. Is your phone ringing? No. No? Nope. Uh, hi, I think I have the wrong number. I'm sorry. Take care. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I know I have the wrong number. And what's kind of funny is it's <laughs> saved in my top five. <laughs> those are your top five wrong numbers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's a weird thing to save. I didn't recognize the voice either. So that had to have been your old number or an Alex I haven't talked to in a long time. <laughs> oh, my God. So it could be somebody you know. It could be. But they okay. didn't recognize my number. Okay, good. So. All right. So you got away with it. Yeah. So. The perfect crime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? On your birthday, I'll call that guy. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna. I was about to say, why don't I just give you my number? But then the weird guy from the comments will call me. <laughs> yes. Like, Off air, give me your number. I That's forget. I, very easy to forget that this is air. Yes. <laughs> because why would you? Yep, that's right. The there are literally tens of tens that may get your number if you're not careful. Yeah, and there those people aren't right. Oh, they've been watching this fucking show. God, uh, they're they're better than the people doing the show, but they're still not right. Or that doesn't make you healthy. That's right. Healthier is not healthy. Amen. That's what I keep telling my trainer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm now the song we picked this week. I I'm not going to hear it in L.A. There's no way. <laughs> no, I bet not. Yeah. Have don't you ever heard them? Huh? Don't you wish, though? I, have you ever heard it live? I don't think so. Yeah. And you've been, how many times have you seen Billy Joel in concert? Uh, eight, probably. Something like that. Eight I would have thought it was a bigger number, but eight or nine times is still a lot. That's a good amount. It's a lot. Yeah. Um doesn't feel like there's a lot of variation from the set list yeah it's really all the hits yeah and then like summer highland falls which he fucking loves for some reason isn't it good that is a good thing man i respect that because that's what it is to be to still be an artist you're like i'll do all the hits but i'm fucking doing this song i like this song yeah one for me yeah. And you don't hate the song. It's fine, right? Yeah. It's, it's a lovely, song. very, very pretty piano. Yeah. And very weird lyrics. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you do wish that he would go a little afield sometimes. Yeah. But I understand, you know, I, I would say at the average concert at Madison Square Garden, people are seeing him for the first time in years, and probably the first time. Hey, Most give me a guess. I want you to guess something, and I'll and we'll find out if you were right. What's right. the song him and Stevie Nicks are going to do together that's from his set? Oh, boy. I don't oh. think New York State of Mind. It could be Los Angelinos, but I don't think so. I think she's got the 
Yeah, no, probably not that. Miley Cyrus did New York State of Mind and was wonderful. They'll do just the way you are. Oh, that's a good guess. I guess. It's a yeah. full guess based on nothing. Yeah. It feels to me sometimes like there's only two or three that he'll do with other people too, because they want to do a specific just the way you are would be cool. Um I was thinking like Vienna would be really nice with a uh, girl voice. Yeah. And her voice particularly, because she's got that little rasp would be pretty fun. So I'm going to guess Vienna only because I can picture it, but I doubt it's right. All right. So what That's song it. does he do from her set list? Oh, her set list. I don't know nearly as well. You know, the big one. Yeah. And it could be that. Yeah. What is that song called? Stand Back? I was going to say Landslide. Right. Maybe, right? Because it's sad and it'd be pretty on piano. My producer uh, supports that pick. Thank you, Sue. Very good. Don't you think it'd be really pretty too? Because it's already a really beautiful song, usually played on acoustic guitar, played on piano. I think it would sound really nice. I support it. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know her catalog nearly as well. Yeah. Um, fucking good song. She's she's a sing though it's a good match in this sense. They're both singer-songwriters. She's writing a lot of amazing lyrics. And a lot of her lyrics are her mad at somebody. <laughs> oh great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mostly Lindsay Buckingham, I think. They're mostly her being mad at Lindsay Buckingham, but they're very specific. Yeah, and I'll bet he doesn't like Lindsey Buckingham that much. I don't. Why would you? Yeah, I don't know. I'm are you a... are you familiar with the album Rumors? Yes. Um, retroactively, here's my problem: is I didn't buy any music. I was not allowed to buy albums and stuff growing up, <laughs> and I heard everything for the first time when MTV happened. Oh. So I thought. I was talking to Sue about this the other day. I thought The Who was a terrible band because they had that one song on MTV <laughs> and they played the shit out of it and it was so bad. And I was like, why are all these old guys in a band together? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> it was all the Fleetwood Mac people had like solo albums around that time. So it was Lindsey Buckingham had some stupid song that they played way too much. Holiday Road, too much. And then they, it was, uh, who else? I think even Mick Fleetwood had some shit out with his zoo band. Yep. And so I heard it all. I heard everybody after they broke up <laughs> for the first time. And then it was like, oh, hey, these, these guys were all in a band together. And that was good. But I didn't know about that. Yeah. I started listening to like uh, oldie stations. Well, you'll enjoy this yeah, then. The as Who well. is good. Yeah, they're good. They were well. The Who were good. First base. Yep. Um, the um, you'll like this rumors. Great album. It's I think probably they're considered their best album. Maybe. I believe so. So many of the songs are different band members writing an expose of another band member. It's all mean stuff, but right. before they break up, and it was a huge hit, so every damn night they would play <laughs> the song and look at the person they were mad at and sing it to them. Right. Go Your Own Way, which sound you know that song, You Can Go Your Own Way. Sounds like a happy up. It ain't a happy upbeat song lyrically. <laughs> Pretty That's great. A great tour. <laughs> uh, so I picked the weekend song, and that's what I picked for uh, this podcast, not our Fleetwood Mac podcast, which is also episode eighty-seven. I think right. We've had eighty-seven of those. Yeah, except we did one Miley Cyrus <laughs> on that podcast. Too. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And our Miley Cyrus podcast, we take no breaks. It's only Miley. Only Miley. <laughs> it's only flowers. 
That's right. And most of it is just me talking about how I'm pretty sure she's pretty. <laughs> right. And I am going, uh-huh. Yeah. She's established. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's you frustrated going, why, why did I agree to this? <laughs> why am I doing three podcasts with this fucking narcissist? <laughs> uh, I believe he's manipulating me. <laughs> and somehow I can't say no. That's right. So, yeah, because our, our issues lock up perfectly yeah and that's what love is <laughs> um the weekend song what are I you like any song that's called the some the something song <laughs> uh the if if uh flowers was called the flower song you love it even more love it even more if that's possible you must you must be excited for next wednesday you get to hear the birthday song at least <laughs> You do. I love it when people sing it at me. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. This so long, you're not in it. <laughs> okay. There's a uh there's an ending to this song, by the way. The weekend song is an ending. You're very happy about that. Yeah. And did you I don't know if you noticed this. I noticed it. So I'll just bring it up. Was it it ends it's got a little <laughs> ending drum thing and ending which I <laughs> I thought, oh, that's kind of old-fashioned and cool. Yeah. What's that? Is it blues? I think it's considered blues. It's, yeah, it's... It does sound like 50 other songs he has. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But, like, I'm... uh, It reminds me of, like, uh, Roadhouse stuff. Yeah. He's singing behind Chicken Wire or something. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, um, that's for sure. It's good though. It's a nice little tune. And buddy, if you like sky commas, this is for you. And you know that I do. I know that you do. It it comes out the gate. It's it seems lyrically it's a little bit different, which is nice. Yeah. It's I feel like he's inhabiting a character or going for a uh, a genre yeah he's definitely trying to be an every man here which is funny because you're not he's not he, he really is kind of pulling it off for a guy who like lived in the suburbs and took piano lessons yeah and i don't know i'm sure he had a job at some point that wasn't musician but not for very long for sure very long I and think he, he was blessed to look like a fucking fire hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, that guy looks working class. Yeah, absolutely. Um, by the way, and I might even link to it. There's another YouTube show about Billy Joel. And I think they only did one episode. And I think it's a series of things they do. But the title of the episode is Why Billy Joel is America's Greatest Songwriter. Wow. Wow. That guy likes Billy Joel. We like Billy Joel. Yeah, I, we should investigate that. Yeah, I'm gonna look, watch that and see if I agree. I kind of, I'm well, I probably will. I might agree because who else is it gonna? It could be because I'm like, well, what about the Beatles? Oh no, he's not. They're not American. Because I always forget that. <laughs> By the way, I literally always forget that because they feel so part of American culture to me. But then I'm like, yeah, one of the most prominent details about them is their Britishness. Well, no, nothing's more American than uh, coming here from Britain and taking over. Yeah, and nothing's more American than me deciding, no, that's ours. <laughs> right. Yeah. We invented that. No, I, think you're t- I think you're stealing it. What are you going to do about it? We're America. <laughs> <laughs> you came here voluntarily, bro. <laughs> This, uh, yeah, man, Sky Comma's up the fucking yang here. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Billy Joel Street Life Serenade. Why don't I kick it off? Kick it. Honestly, how different is this than anything I think he's written? This back breaking, bone shaking, belly aching, hard working, two more hours to go. That's right out the gate. Break. This back-breaking, bone-shaking, belly-aching, hard-working, two more hours to go. 
Yes, it's keeping me alive doing, this guy comment, nine to five, and I ain't got nothing to show. Man, that's pretty funny. Pretty <laughs> soon I'll be, I'll be leaving with the wages I'm receiving, but I know it's going to be all right. Come on, baby, and take me away. We got some money to spend tonight. Hell yeah. That's really fun. It's really fun. It's really uh, succinct. Yep. The whole working man experience. By the way, I didn't mean to yell. No, it, <laughs> it could easily be like uh, one of these uh, greasy swamp guy country songs. Yeah. Yes. It actually might be closer to country than it is anything else uh, in its ethos. Yeah. Um, yeah. Work is hard. I barely make enough money, but we're going to get drunk tonight. <laughs> we got uh, also, no mention of the weekend. Oh, yeah, which is nice. Yeah, the title's not in it. Yeah, but the title's implied. Title's implied. That's good. I'm res I'm assuming that I know it's going to be all right. Come on, babe, and take me away. We got some money to spend tonight. And how often is he this fun? <laughs> so true. Yeah. I mean, aside from the first line. Yeah. Complete got all his complaints out in the first line. <laughs> yep. Pick me up. Pick me up at the station. Meet me at the train. Have a meal and shower and a change of clothes. I can't afford a vacation, but I can take the strain. As long as I can be with you, find a way to burn it as quickly as I earn it. I like that line. Yeah. It's great. I like, um, you know, uh, the redneck types, country folks, the simple people, the blue collars. They <laughs> love to talk about people who shower before work and people who shower after work. If that's the, what the country is divided into, as far as a lot of them are concerned, because they work real hard and they get sweaty and they have to shower after work. So I think it's interesting that he put in his uh, shower, a that's meal shower and a change of clothes dude that is a good observation and i have been both a guy shaw who luxury of showering before and luxury of showering after depending on like which i'm very of fortunate because more than once now i have showered at work <laughs> because uh our building has a gym and the gym is on the same floor as my office and so sometimes i will go to the the my gym here in Brooklyn and work out and then take the train all gross shower at work nice uh one time for uh, a semester I had a job testing showers <laughs> best job I ever had it was great <laughs> oh you never showered before work yeah oh no, no yeah yeah I would just take showers all day and when I was home to decompress I would have a bath nice <laughs> You gotta relax. Yeah, I miss that. Sounds chaotic. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Being blasted uh, with water. Yeah. <laughs> All the newest showers I got to try. It was great. So, what was your favorite? Do you like the side jets? Uh, they were new at the time and risky. Sure, because they hadn't gotten the technology down, and uh, they were too they were too hard and hot, and they figured oh, yeah. it out. So I still got scars from that, but it's fine, you know. I hope you were well compensated. Oh, it was a great gig. I loved my boss. My boss was great. You know, it was uh, your boss also in the shower? Uh, no, one of the great things was we he respected boundaries. Oh, that's very <laughs> respected curtains. Yeah, exactly. He would take showers, but a different shower. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was in the boss's shower, which was fucking nice, and I don't, but whatever. Um, Those have been tested ahead of time. Yeah. His yeah. company, he can do that. That's fine. I don't judge. But I judge a little. You agree to the <laughs> It's good that you don't judge. <laughs> uh, shall I go? Yes. Also, what station is she? I guess he's at the subway, or probably the... New Jersey Transit. All right, yeah. Um, up at the station. I'm probably New Jersey Transit, right? Yeah, I would guess. Or the Long Island Railroad, very likely. 
Well, where well, else? Yeah, I think we're going to get more job details. <laughs> uh, yes. It's back breaking, bone shaking, belly aching, hard working. Two more hours to go. Seven long years for the same corporation. And I ain't got nothing to show. But tonight when I'm leaving, I'll be just breaking even. But I know it's going to be all right. I'll shake off my blues when you put on your shoes. We got some money to spend tonight. <laughs> Seven long years for the same corporation. Doesn't sound that long. No, it certainly doesn't now. Wow. Yeah, yeah I guess he was, was he pretty, not that young when this song came out. 74. So, yeah, he's probably in his 30s. Yeah, I guess that's a long time when you're in your 30s. You know what? In your 30s, it's a long damn time because in your 30s, that amount of time feels like your life is slipping away. That's like a quarter of your life at that point. And you're like, I should be. But in your 40s or 50s, if you're there for seven years, you think, well, I guess this is it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In your 30s, you still can have this idea of like, I'm going to. And by the way, at any age, you can change course. For people listening, I'm just telling you human experience, but also if you happen to be in your 50s and you want to do something different, do that. I don't want to say you can't. By all means, but don't start a new whole new career. You can, but my goodness. Yeah. Well, I've asked me like, you know, hey, if a late night uh, ends or whatever, uh, what do you, what show are you going to work on next? And I was like, oh, there's no next. <laughs> I, I'm going to work on my... I'm going to paint little trains in the attic. Oh, uh, painting trains. My brother is actually doing that. And it's oh, great. great. What scale? Uh, I, I can. H.O.? They're tiny little dudes, like this big. Little tiny trains? And Z? Z scale? What is Z scale? Those are the tiniest trains. No, not that. A little bigger than that. Oh, probably N scale. Yeah, and he's, dream. he's having so much fun. So great. Yeah, he's super retired, and it's funny, he's retired, but then he started a band, because my brother's a really good musician. It just, that part of his life took a backseat to having amazing kids. That's what happened. Oh, great. And well, that's, taking a backseat, that's a good one. Yeah, and a wife that, his wife is fantastic. She's a good lady. I, he did well. Um, but now his band gets bar gigs and oh no, <laughs> and they get and they get money. They were given money by the bar. Fucking great. And if there's far away gigs that offer him money, they just don't do those ones because he ain't in the mood. They're gonna have to be within like yeah. hundred miles radius and far. Yeah. That's, you know, if there's anything good about being old, it's that you're like, uh, these are my parameters now. Yep. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm finally at a place in my career where, you know, a few years ago, I came to this place where I was saying no to shit. And it's the best. Yeah. Hey, you want to write for the Canadian Music Awards? Like, no. <laughs> good luck, though. We'll give you this money. Ah, I have some already. <laughs> it all worked out nicely for me, so you go ahead. I'm not wow. going to Toronto and try to get the Jonas Brothers to say a joke right. <laughs> yeah, that's... I, I don't know which level of hell that is, but that's one of them. Yeah, I think it's like entry-level hell. Oh, yeah, it might be deep. Hell or that that's, yeah, that just sounds awful. Yeah, I think it would be. I'm sure they're very nice. I know they're very nice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't need that. Yeah. So, that's, oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's a good thing. 18 years for the same corporation. Yeah, you and have got something to show. Yeah, you have been at the same corporation, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. And I, I'm fine with it. And please keep me there. <laughs> yeah. Very little backbreaking, very little bone shaking. Lots of belly aching. A little bit of belly aching for sure. <laughs> I mean, the rhythm of this is nice, 
And I will say, we've talked about this before, so it's worth mentioning that there's no uh, bridge that's uh, bothersome where it's too different. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, that's it's not like I tried to jam a second song in here. Yeah. Now, you did that, I think, what was it, the one that we, it's on An Innocent Man, there's a few songs where the bridge disrupts the idea that this was a 50s song. Yes. And it that's not happening here. There's not a... There's, in fact, there's this little three-line thing right here that I'll read. Please, and I like this one, too. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to stand here and sound accusing. Everybody does their share of losing. If I'm going to lose it, I might as well be doing it right. How weird is it to hear that out of Billy Joel's mouth? Because that's not complaining at all. Very relaxed. Um, maybe all his other songs are about weekdays. <laughs> <laughs> that might be it. He's yeah. And he could, two days off. And he couldn't call them all weekday songs. <laughs> no. He's not an idiot. Um, I do like everybody does their share of losing. Me too. Because you will remember from uh, our collegiate era that you and I and uh, certain other friends would call each other sometimes and be like, hey, what are you doing? And the other person would say, losing. Being a loser, sitting around losing. Yeah. Um, but those days are over. Look at us. Yep. Winners. Winners. I went to Denny's and I'm going to see Billy Joel in concert. I don't know what else you want. Yeah, uh, so I, I'm having a uh, bowling birthday party this weekend, dude. That's fucking fantastic, right? That is so great. Family in Brooklyn, who knew? Yeah, and we're gonna go fucking bowl. Let me ask you a question about bowling. Do you know your average? And uh, I've been years. Okay, I was in a league when I was a kid in like high school, and I carried like a one sixty. That's pretty good. Good. Um, yeah. but I, I lived in the bowling alley. There's nothing else to do. Yeah. Probably now 130s, 120s, probably is what's gonna happen. Probably, right? Looking at. Yeah, because for yeah, and also that thing gets heavy after a while. Yeah. yeah. I, I my hopes for the day are I don't hit myself in the ankle with the ball. <laughs> That'll be a good, good birthday. Good that yeah. little bony outcropping. Woo. Yeah. Yep. No oh, thanks. And it's back breaking, bone shaking, belly aching. Hard work and two more hours to go. It's keeping me alive, doing nine to five, and I got nothing to show. Tonight when I'm leaving, I'll be just breaking even, but I know it's going to be all right. Come on, baby, take me away. We got some money to spend tonight. Come on, baby. Babe, this time, babe. Oh, babe, both times, sorry. And take me away. Got some money to spend tonight. So I think that that was just a repeat of what we said before, but a very sensible repeat for the song. It's not doesn't feel repetitive. It feels like a nice bit of closure. It never got weird. He never yelled at her. <laughs> never yelled at her for spending too much of the money he made. Yeah. Happy to spend it. He didn't suddenly go, hey, and why do you have a job? He wasn't mad that she had a job. <laughs> yep. Wasn't telling somebody else how to spend their weekend. That's right. He he and he didn't even put a lot of stuff on her like expectations. He was like, "Wouldn't it be nice if we went out?" Seems yeah. the theme of the show of the song. He just wants her to put on shoes. Yeah, that's not too much to ask. I don't think it really is. Oh, it's the weekend. Now, was that maybe the uh, subtext? Is that most of the time they go out? He's like. Why the fuck didn't you put on shoes? Is that kicked, so? out, kicked out of Denny's again? <laughs> God damn it! What a perfectly good song, and like I said, it's got a proper ending. <laughs> Nothing makes you happier. Yes, I love it when a song has a point, does its thing, and they figure out the ending, and they don't just like fade it. I love it. I'm with you. I don't hate it as much when it peters out, but I get it. I here's so some songs I don't mind that with, but a song that's 
I mind it more if I really like the song because yeah. if I really like the song. It's probably because I think, ah, oh, this is a really well written, nice song. Oh, why couldn't you just figure out that part? Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. It, you know, it, I think it's because you presume music is played live and you can't, fading out is not an option for you. Yeah. When you play it live. So if you do it on your album, it's a cop out. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you're right. It's just a cop out. Nothing to add to that. It just is. But and I do like the little at the end with the drums. I like that the simple end with the drums. That was nice. Yeah, just letting you know. Yeah, and it was. It's literally just hitting the hitting the snare once is what I think it was. I just don't think there was. There's no sound effects. There's no. It's just a damn song. That's all I did. I made a song. A little jukebox song. Yeah, not remotely a hit. Don't think so. No, I don't think it was anybody saw it. Yeah, and it could have been. There's nothing wrong with this song. It could have been a fine little radio hit. Um, I I like it. It's just a damn good song. Oh yeah. Um yeah. And, uh, appropriate enough as I begin my weekend on Thursday nights. Ah, you get the long weekend, yeah. Now because you're on the good show. Eighteen years. With the same corporate, actually, well, technically, I worked for GE first, and right. now I work for Comcast. <laughs> so, right. um, but the intermediary corporation, I'll send you a chart. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you a question about the Seth show. By the way, I've been watching the monologues this week. Great monologues, very enjoyable. Fun week. You guys have been knocking it out of the park. Um, in the old days, and when go go back in time to say the seventies, and yeah. did the weekend update, and the weekend update back then wasn't remotely really political. No, not really. It would more be like we found this weird story about a guy who caught two fish at once or something, and we made a joke. Yeah. A lot of Florida man. Yeah. Um, do you guys do you like it when you get to do those ones? Because you do a little bit of that still, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I divide the monologue every day. And this is not the closer look. I'm talking about the actual monologue. Right. The monologue proper, the old fashioned. Here's proper jokes. is like five political jokes and then five or six junk stories. Yeah. And I, you know, it's more challenging to write the political jokes. It's harder to find a, a take that's interesting or something you haven't heard. Um, yeah. That feels like homework. And then it feels like dessert when you get, when you get one where the setup gets a laugh. <laughs> right. Oh, this is, I get two for one. Yeah. yeah. It's, in two, you know, we get setups sent to us. We have a writer's assistant who does that, and I'll get like three pages of political setups. And then you'll get a page of like fast food setups. <laughs> Every restaurant has a new thing they're offering. Then we'll get like a bunch of today is national something or other day. Yeah. And get a list of birthdays. Like we get a lot to choose from. Um, and those are so fun to just read. Like we had one yesterday that was about a woman in Florida who was pulled over during a traffic stop and removed uh, from her body cavity, we had to say, 11 grams of meth. Wow. So you get a huge reaction on the setup. And then it's like, oh, look, it's fun to find the thing that will like set off a flare. And just like, because you got a laugh rolling already. <laughs> so you're like, oh, how, do I, how are we going to get them? Um, those are the ones that are super fun. Yeah. Do you feel like now you have more license to do that, that the world's a little less crazy? Yes. I, what I'm, I'm realizing is like we had license before and we didn't use it enough. Yeah. Like it, there was plenty of room to talk about how we're all going to die. And then also do 
Florida man. Yeah. Because the work is not that great now. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. always a clusterfuck on the edge of annihilation. Yeah. It's weird. It's a friend of mine who's a real political wonk and he uh he studied poli sci and um, and he did he's smart. But he likes to point out and he regularly points this out whenever anybody's upset about whatever and he goes, "Well, you know what? You live in the best time to be alive so far. Yeah. Don't forget that." Yep. That this particular chunk of 50 years that you live in you know, back and forth, one go one direction or the other is way better than the 50 before it. Yeah, man. And that's just always true. And that doesn't mean you can't be annoyed, but maybe have a little perspective is all. Yeah. 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 Uh, just, it, I think people who uh, are historians or know a lot about history are aware of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's Hard to be aware of it when you're in the middle of it and the parts that you hate are still going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there is definitely injustice and whatever. But hey, look at the cute baby. Oh, look at that. Uh huh. That's cute baby holding a bunch of hundred dollar bills. Yep. Oh, uh, rich baby. <laughs> rich. Well, maybe rich, sure. But baby definitely has some cash. I wonder how much money that is. It looks like three hundred bucks, three hundred dollar babies. Could be. I think. I think that baby has more than three hundred bucks. I'm pretty sure. Huh. Okay, that's definitely a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Is a is that a million dollar baby? <laughs> is it a midwestern baby? It could be. Could be, could be. I I bet those are uh, ten crisp hundred dollar bills. <laughs> uh, hold, hold on, thousand dollars, baby with a thousand dollars, baby's got a thousand bucks. Yep, big shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that baby would be a big shot. I almost want to take that answer, but no. Ah, uh, come on, take it because I am <laughs> blank. I'm so blank. Thousand dollar baby with baby's got a thousand dollars. Baby grand, baby grand, baby. baby. <laughs> ah, great. Ah, uh, but also, I think big shot's a better answer. <laughs> Who's a big shot? Yeah, well, you know, because you can you, can you picture a spoon up that little nose? Oh, uh -huh. Tiniest cocaine spoon. Oh, they were all impressed. <laughs> with your Oshkosh <laughs> All impressed with your Oshkosh Bagosh. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, uh, great. Look at that big shot. Yeah. It, uh, it looks like I'm playing the game too, but this is just my house. Yeah. There's no hints. Yeah, those are just three big shots. <laughs> you got it <laughs> um all right i have a dumb trivia question i love it uh i'm realizing as i'm phrasing it in my head it sounds more like a riddle but it's actually a trivia question um billy joel attended woodstock he left early why did he leave Billy Joel attended because Woodstock would have been 1960-something, um, right? Yeah. Uh, he attended Woodstock. He left early because he had school in the morning. <laughs> and we all know he was a very good student. <laughs> no, that's right. Um, no, it's a very fun, uh, I think, a very funny reason. Um, and, uh, and a very Jewish reason. Oh, his stomach hurt. He got sick from something he ate. I'm going to sort of take that. He was disgusted by the porta potties. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't handle going to the bathroom in the porta potties. So he left Woodstock. He is, he is right. He, he is, is right. right. That's He's always an old man. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'd have left for, I wouldn't have gone. 
This, oh, there's no chairs. Yeah. No oh, thanks. Yeah, I I don't. I've been to one festival, and it wasn't even a music festival. It was a comedy festival of <laughs> like there were animators there, you know, from comedy shows doing little panel stuff. There was comedians. There was some bands, but they were like joke bands. Um, Tenacious, oh, God, yeah. D, Tenacious D was there, which is kind of cool. Um, and I still didn't enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. It's all that fucking walking around. There's the sun. There's like, oh, I can't wait to eat a corn dog in the sun. All right. That's what's very conducive to comedy. Yeah. Corn dog in the sun. I can't. Well, that was uh, Maya Angelou, right? Oh, I was going to say Soundgarden. <laughs> corn dog in the sun's better. But I imagine that, that it was a, I thought it was an empowering thing about overcoming. You thought it was a song. I like that. <laughs> Maybe Langston Hughes. <laughs> what happens to a corn dog in the sun? I mean, one thing, it doesn't get better. No. Nobody ever says I'm like, now, now you gotta let it sit out for a while. Nobody ever yeah. says that. Corn dog under a full moon, though. Oh yeah, corn dog under a full moon. I that was romance. a was a romance novel. Is that what that was? <laughs> yeah. Corn Real dog Real bodice ripper. Yeah, it was a picture of a very handsome man with a corn dog, <laughs> shirtless with a corn dog. With a corn dog. Uh, what song are we doing? I want what I want to know. You know, we've been all over Street Life Serenader. Have we done Street Life Serenader? No. Let's do the song. Let's do the song. Street Life Serenade. Very mopey song with some great phrases in it. That's awesome. And now, are we uh, are we almost clearing the books on the Street Life Serenade? We're close. Aren't we? No, I think all that's left are instrumental pieces. Yeah, which we Can't could. Do. Yeah, we could do a special episode, but it would not be very special or worth doing. <laughs> no, just for us to gear and go. Yeah, well, I like root beer. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Why do we talk like that? <laughs> Ever have ice cream and root beer? Gee, man, Christmas is the whole episode of this. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I never like root beer. Yeah, I like his Mr. Pibb. 